as I suspected, this is the piece of uh, steel that I bought to go over the front of this of the trailer cover, as a skin cover. It's 26 gauge steel. That's how much it weighs. Two pounds. Okay, I'm going to grab the piece of wood that used to be on the front. Okay, we're going to weigh that. Looks like about three and three quarter pounds, roughly. The camera's not picking it up. It's making it look a little bit less, but... Yeah, so... I've already saved some weight over that wood skin that I had on there. The object of today's exercise... Oh, wrong subject. Um, object for today is we want to get this piece of metal across the front here. But, I took the tape measure and went up over, as in from here up over. I got 11 and a half inches. This is 12 inches wide. So I'm going to take half inch off on the bottom side. Oh, and if you notice, I'm working in my garage because I have my garage back. Woohoo! If you haven't seen the story on the new shed where we're keeping the ATVs and the lawnmower, you have to go check that video out. Okay, so I marked a half inch. I'm going to use the tape as my cutting guide. And um, we're going to take a half inch off here. Or attempt to. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put the, the cut edge down the bottom and use the, the non-sharp edge and fold that over. So I'm going to have to scrounge up some metal around here or wood to see if I can use it as a bending break. Alright, so my uh, jack of all trades bench that I use for working is out here on the front porch because we were painting yesterday and we're using it as a staging table to set up the paint so this is where we're going to work from now for the moment what I've done is I've marked an inch and a half back with the tape there and that's the width of the bend that will go on top of the trailer so I'm going to attempt to clamp this metal uh, between those two pieces there, I just barely had two pieces long enough to do this. So I'm going to clamp them between there and try and use that to leverage a bend. Let's see how it works or if it's going to work at all. In fact, I'm going to set it back just a little bit to account for radius curvature.
I'm probably going to have to move that clamp in order to bend it all the way, but let's give it a shot here. Maybe a little bit too far. Let's see what the tape measure says. Nope, oh, just a hat out tear it tad bit over ten. About an inch and a half. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim some of that bottom off. That's okay. Got plenty of room. But that's pretty close for now. Let's uh, go back to the quad. I mean the trailer. And um, I'll trim this off and we'll see how it. I'm going to have to cut a hole in the middle here because there's a D-ring sticking out. But I'll get that measurement from inside garage where the quad's at. Okay. So we're going to go there along like this. Something like that. I got my mark inscribed. I better trim that quarter inch or so off the bottom there first. Okay, so by my calculations, that D ring is right there. So I got to get that opened up. I got to trim a little more out of there. So I'm sticking out a little bit there, so I'm going to take a little bit of trim off of that. Okay, I'm going to have to file that down. If you look over on this side, that's where I foobarred this metal right here. Uh, by the time I get paint on this thing, nobody will notice, right? Just you guys that watched that know to look, right? <laughs> okay, so I got to get to busy drilling and put some pop rivets in. I almost forgot before I started putting rivets in. I put the window wrap film on the metal contact surfaces. Still want to try and quiet things down as much as possible. All right, there it is. Pop riveted in place.
I decided to go ahead and trim that up even. Sorta of even. <laughs> It was bugging me too much. All right, I think that's gonna hold. Let me put another one here and here down the road here. We'll see. But uh, that's more progress. So now that the front side is done, now I got to figure out that tailgate assembly for the rear. And still got the side racks. Removable side rails, side racks to do. All right. I'm going to start on the tailgate next. Probably. Maybe. More than likely. Who knows? Okay, I got a little bit out of sequence here. Uh, I'm still kind of debating on that tailgate. So I started working on my rack rails and I decided to go with 15 inches tall. So I kind of tacked things in place. I'm going to pull it out and uh, weld it a little bit better. But I'm going to do some quarter inch rod or something like that uprights every eight or so inches in here to strengthen it and you can kind of see where on this side I just got the post sitting in the slot held in place by the vice grips so I'll get that side finished welding and make sure it comes in and out of there. <laughs> Hopefully I got it set so you don't have to use a screwdriver or a pry bar to pop it in and out. But uh, we shall see. Onwards and up. Okay, my big concern was that this would be able to slide in and out. And um, apparently I have success. Without too much difficulty. We'll see if it's still the case by the time I get it all the way welded up, but I went with a little bit thinner angle iron here than I had planned on because I was trying to save some weight. So, there you go. I'll get this finished and I'll work, get the other side done. Progress so far. That measurement was off. Oh, need to take it down on RCH. I wonder if I could do that. Oh, we'll find out.
Well, I burned a hole in the tubing. <laughs> Tried to fill it back up. Hey, how about that? All right, you can see the front and the back. I've got that quarter inch round rod. Uh, I've cut them at 14 and a quarter inches. I've got them welded in place. Let's get a closer look here. So I still have the left side and the right side to do. And this rod, it's just quarter inch round rod. Just putting them on the chop saw, cutting them off 14, 14 and a quarter. So I've got uh, eight to put on this side and eight to put on that side. On the front and the back, I went seven inches between rods, roughly. Might have cheated a little bit on the one on the far right. But on these sides, it just the math worked out. <laughs> They're gonna be seven and a half inches apart. But I'll have eight on each side versus in the front and back just having four. And then add some little bit of, oh, it's still hot. <laughs> Yeah, it's still hot. <clears throat> still going to be removable. Well, once you know it, I was down to the last side rail, the one on the far side, and uh, making the second pass on my welds on the opposite side of the rod, and I ran out of welding rod. So, at least we can see or envision what it's going to look like. So, all right, progress so far. I got the removable racks all welded up together. And I got their lock pins. I've got those in place. And I got some here. And um, I'm probably going to put one more on each side. But I wound up putting them about a half inch back because uh, I got to find it this side I drilled the holes uh, is it going to show in the sun here All right right there and right there I drilled those holes and it left too much slop in here so this was rattle back and forth, and if, if you've been watching the previous parts, uh, my big pet peeve on a trailer off-road is I don't want to hear it rattling. So I put these really tight. I might even have to carry a, a pair of water pump pliers with me if I decide I want to get them off. Um, that one's not so tight. That one's a little bit loose. But I didn't want these rails running back and forth and banging against each other. So that's where we're at on that. I've got them all welded up together and in place. So I've got to get some primer. I'm going to be primering that piece of steel, all the rack rails, and all the pop rivets that are in there. i got to put some primer on that. I don't want anything rusting. And then... I got a final coat of paint, but what I had skipped was the tailgate, and I just finished this. What it's going to do is going to pop out at the bottom, and, and I'll hinge it up here on the top. So that's kind of what it looks like. Uh, 
So I'll put a piece of sheet steel over this, hinge it, and then put some kind of catch releases on the bottom so it'll pivot out, kind of like a dump truck. If you've ever seen a dump truck unload gravel, uh, the tailgate swings open at the bottom and they control the depth. That's kind of what I'm thinking here. Oh, and while I'm on the subject of these rack rails, I did not invent these. I just stole somebody's uh, idea I saw they did on their trailer. I think it was the Texas Bowhunter Forum. But uh, there's a guy that made a blue trailer that made some rack rails like this. I wound up going with 15 inch. Probably said that earlier in the video. Um, I went conservative. Uh, I was hoping to get 18 or 24. But I decided we're going to try 24. And as soon as I get this sheet metal mounted on that tailgate, I'm going to hitch this thing up. <clears throat> I don't need the tailgate finish for that. I'm going to hitch it up to the quad. And um, I'm going to do some circles, run around, and see if this part of the rack rails are going to make contact with the back of my quad here. Got the sheet metal cut, fitted, and almost all the rivets, but I ran out of rivets. So I went ahead and drilled all the holes where they're going to be. And when I pick up some more rivets, I'll finish that. Anyway, so I got to figure out uh, how I'm going to hinge that. Probably have rivets in the way, right? Um, make some latches. And we'll go from there. And I've got it hitched up to the quad. I don't know. One good bump. <laughs> I'm going to take it for a test drive. See how it does. All right. That's one can of rattle can primer. <laughs> uh, I'm going to give that a day or two to dry and um, pull it apart and get the spots I missed, like where I was painting the tailgate there tailgate was laying on that corner when I painted it so that's where we're at all right I'm down to the last piece of physical construction for the trailer I believe uh, I'm gonna do my tongue extendable back and forth <clears throat> I'm not gonna get as crazy or complex with it as, as I originally had planned I wanted to put uh, a couple bends in it to get the trailer to travel more level, but I'm not going to do that at this time, maybe down the road. Mm -hmm. What I do is I've already unbolted this. I'm going to cut this off right here, just over five inches, and then I'm going to cut a piece of this inner stuff. I don't know how long yet, and this will go over the end of here. And I'll bolt that on there, and I'll, I'm going to set it for roughly that there is roughly one more, one foot of extension. So if I bolt this in place, the ball coupler onto this piece after it's cut off and slide it over this. I should be able to slide this all the way back to here when I need to. And I'll put a, a hole somewhere somewhere up in here for a regular hitch pin. Standard half inch hitch pin. So I should be able to go back and forth. Okay, so I have this, I might get this piece here. I got it cut off and that's what the ball coupler goes to. So, I'm going to extend this out to right there, and this will go over there, and the ball coupler goes over that, 
kind of tight right now. And then I'll put a hole here. And after I get this all squared away, I'll slide all the way in and drill the hole through the piece here to match that hole. So I can go either way. And I wound up going 33 inches. So that's how much I'll have on the inside. And we will come back. Alrighty. Here's what we got for the hitch pin. That's the new length. But if I get an elk down and I need to go between the trees real tight, I can just slide it in there, put the pin in, and take the racks off. So I got two lengths, and that's one foot longer out here. Oh, and I put these, I made these little shims out of some sheet metal, just bent over the edges, to go in here to help tighten this up a little bit. There you go. So, probably about 90% of the time, I'm going to leave it at this. I may have to get some kind of a locking uh, hitch pin here, because it, it still rattles a little bit. And I don't know if I could shim it out any further. So, uh, yeah. 90% of the time, I'll leave it here, because I'll be hauling cargo. And... If I get an elk down, I'll just shorten it up. And I need to show you what we did with the tailgate, too. Alright, I don't know if you can tell, but I use clevis pins. And I have some washers and spacers and a little piece of steel there. And then I made, uh, well, I ordered these off of Amazon, these little... There you go, and there is what that kind of what that clevis pin looks like. Kind of goes up like that. There's the inside of the clevis. That's it for most of the mechanical construction. I may, st I'm still going to plan on getting some lock pins that go perpendicular to these ones uh, but I got to find the right size that I need and I'll put those in at another time but I'm not going to film that uh, I've got left to do is to prime this thing all over again and repaint it and I found a different kind of paint I'm going to use and we'll see how that goes but I'm probably not going to film the painting and primering because you probably would find that boring. So my next video that you see will probably be 2021 wall tent elk camp setup where I'm hauling all my gear in and you'll get a chance to see the difference on the, the hitch length, how, how much of a difference that makes. So. That's pretty much it. If you sat through and watched all of the these episodes up to this point, I'd like to take say thank you for watching all of these. If you like what you've seen, make sure you give me a thumbs up and a, or a like. And think about subscribing to the channel, especially uh, when we start doing uh, um, the 2021 wall tent set up this year. I've got some changes in mind depending on time allowed <laughs> for my free time and we're gonna go from there. So have a nice day and peace out.